Hello, this is Bob Steele. In this lecture, we will continue on Chapter 9, Accounts Receivable, and we will now be talking about the allowance method. So we just took a look at the direct write-off method, which is going to be an easier method, but it does not uh, adhere to the matching principle as easily as the allowance method. So the allowance method is the generally accepted principle. If the receivables and the bad debt is a significant number, then we need to make this estimate in order to be in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. So, allowance method, at the end of each period, estimate total bad debt expected to be realized from the, the um, periods. So, basically, you can think about it, if it's a year, and it's the end of a fiscal year, and it's, it's 1231, and now we need to say, well, we're going to make our financial statements right now, and we need to know, then, how much of the receivables at that point in time we believe will be uncollectible. So, there's two advantages to the allowance method over the direct write-off method. And it recognizes estimated bad debt expense in the period when the related sales are recorded. So what we're trying to do in that is match the expense of the bad debt to the, to the sales that are related to it. That's in accordance with the matching principle. Notice if we do not do that, anything in the receivables as of the end of the year will not become bad debt until the following year. And the problem with that is that the, the expense of the bad debt is not in the same period as when we recognize the revenue. That's what we're trying to do with the estimate in the allowance method versus the direct write-off method. It reports accounts receivable on the balance sheet at the estimated amount of cash to be collected. Now, we really should be recording the accounts receivable net of what we know should be not collected. That's not going to be uncollectible. How do we know it's going to be uncollectible? Because we've been in this business for a while and or we've seen related businesses and we can estimate that there's going to be some amount of debt depending on the business we are in that we just are not going to receive on. Obviously, some industries have a lot more than others, but uh, if if we know what that number is, we shouldn't be reporting financial statements to users, especially if we're a publicly traded company, with a receivable that is too high because of known, uh, if we know that a good percentage of those will not be collectible, we need to uh, tell our readers that with some kind of allowance account. So recording bad debt expense. So Techcom had a credit sales of 300000 during its first year of operations. At the end of the first year, 20000 of the credit sales remained uncollectible. Based on the experience of similar businesses, Techcom estimates that 1500 of its receivables will be uncollectible. So what we're going to do now, at the end of the year, we're, we know that we have this credit sales of 300000 and we're going to come up with this estimate saying that 1005 of those will not be collectible. Now, that hasn't happened yet. People haven't come in and said, we're not going to give you the money on this. But we, we really should tell our readers that it's very likely that that amount of sales will not be collectible based on past experience or industry experience. Therefore, when we create the financial statements, we're, we're going to uh, put an allowance for bad debt, which is a credit. It's a contra asset account. So instead of us reducing the receivable directly, we can't reduce the receivable directly in this case because we don't know who's not going to pay us, but we know somebody's not going to pay us. So we can't reduce the receivable because we wouldn't be able to apply it to the subsidiary ledger by customer because we don't know who's not going to pay us. But we think that there's going to be 1,500 people that will not pay us, and therefore we're going to make another account, which is a contra asset account, meaning it's an asset account with a credit balance, which most assets have debit balances of this 1,005. Then we're going to record the expense in the time period uh, that is matching the revenue. And that's going to be this journal entry here. So this is going to reduce net income as of that uh, adjustment, which is an adjusting entry, kind of like a Chapter 3 adjusting process entry. So then the balance sheet presentation. So Techcom had a credit sales of $300,000 uh, during the first fiscal year. So if we look at the current assets, then what we're going to have is our 20000 less the 1005 because the 20000 is what's in our receivable and then the allowance is going to be out taken out so the net receivable the amount that we think we're actually going to get is 185 uh so the accounts receivable net 185 so writing off bad debt so techcon has determined that 520 accounts is uncollectible so now sometime in the future like if we did it as december and we we put the allowance in there in december now next year and sometime in january Someone came in and we determined that this account's going to be uncollectible. Well, now instead of the direct write-off method of us recording the expense in January, we already have recorded the expense back in December. It's already there. It's in the allowance account. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of the receivable just like we would. We can then post it to the subsidiary ledger for the person who no longer paid us. But instead of debiting the expense and lowering net income in this time period, we're going to debit the allowance account, the contra asset account, which will be right next to accounts receivable. So it's in the asset section. And therefore, there's going to be no effect on net income when the bad debt became bad debt. We recorded it at the same period in which the sales happened. So in this case, uh, we're going to reduce the allowance here. So the direct right, um, the right off does not affect the realizable value of the accounts receivable. So notice that accounts receivable, the net value is unaffected. All we did was move it from the unknown people that are not going to pay us based on the estimate to the known people who are not going to pay us, uh, based on the fact that one individual is not going to pay us. So to help restore credit standing, a customer sometimes volunteers to pay all or part of the amount owed on the account receivable even after it has been written off. So again, this doesn't happen that often, but if we wrote the person off and we, this person disappeared and then he came back in the door like later and actually paid us, then we would have to reverse the write-off just like we did before. So we need to put them back into accounts receivable to put them in good standing and then reduce accounts receivable. So we're going to reverse the last journal entry if this happened. We're going to debit accounts receivable, putting them back in good standing, putting them back in our subsidiary ledger. Then uh, we're going to reverse the allowance. And then we're going to do the normal transaction, which would be to debit cash because they, he paid us, and then credit accounts receivable. Once again, you, if you're looking at this and you're saying, why am I putting it in and out of accounts receivable when I could just debit cash and credit the allowance? And we're doing that because we need to put him back in the subsidiary ledger and have a paper trail that uh, he's basically paid the debt off and in good standing there.